Do y'all know me well enough to know why this Ephesians passage would be a challenge for me to preach? <laughs> okay, any ideas? Military. Guns. Well, my children accuse me of watching every movie looking for the Christ figure in the movie. And I have to admit that when two things go side by side, unscientist that I am about cause and effect, I see God's hand in it. So yesterday at 7 o'clock in the morning when I showed up here to work out with the heat, we did kickboxing, and I learned how to jab, and I learned how to do an uppercut, and a hook, and a kick. Oh my goodness. I was thinking of this scripture for an hour yesterday morning. <laughs> it's a picture of warriors ready to stride into battle against the forces of evil. It reminds folks, certain folks in particular, of onward Christian soldiers. I have somebody to tease about that. Militaristic language, weapons of war, do not characterize my approach to the gospel. And yet, it's in the Bible. It's part of today's lectionary. And so I choose to wrestle with it. My first question for the text is, do Christ followers really need the whole armor of God, a soldier's gear, all the protection of police riot gear? If we take seriously the extent of evil in this world, the dark powers of violence, the deadly forces of sin both within us and without, everything that threatens our separation from the Holy One, then we should listen carefully. If we just look at newspaper headlines that I took from one day in the Capital Journal this past week, which is a very narrow perspective. We witness rampant crime, physical and sexual abuse, drunkenness, drugs, gangs, kidnapping, killing, and budget cutting that raises moral issues about homelessness, hunger, unemployment, lack of access to medical care and meds. The gap between our world today and the shalom and well-being that God intends, that gap is huge. The power of poverty alone creates both predators and prey. Warrior's weapons are necessary for the pervasiveness of evil swirling around us. First, notice that this calls for corporate armaments. No one of us alone can withstand such mighty forces of evil. Instead, like these riot police, we stand shoulder to shoulder as a united body of Christ. So, what is the armor of the church as the body of Christ? The belt of a Roman soldier of Jesus' time holds up his toga so that he can move freely, not constrained by cloth. Today, we hold on to the truth of the gospel of Jesus so that we are free to be flexible, to be able to walk or run into situations where we're needed to proclaim truth in the face of slander or lies or abuse. The breastplate of righteousness, picture a bulletproof bulletproof vest, covers and protects the core of our bodies, our heart, our lifeblood. 
The breastplate of righteousness refers to being in right relationship with God, the Holy One who is the source of our power, the Holy One who calls us to respond to injustice. Shoes instead of Roman sandals. Think of the high-tech boots that our police or soldiers wear, keeping us strong, ready to move and engage evil. Shields. Roman shields were often leather wetted against the slings of fiery arrows. Today, police and soldiers have high-tech shields. But what kind of shields do Christ followers need to protect us from the slings and barbed attacks coming at today's church? Helmet of Salvation reminds us of our baptism as we remember the sign of the cross on our foreheads by which God has named us and claimed us as God's own. We're godly warriors, warriors seeking peace in a world of violence. Notice that all of the above is armor of protection, defensive protection. When we get to the sword of the spirit, that is the word of God, we move into the arena of offensive weaponry. Proclaiming the word of God requires initiative and action on our part. While we may have worn everything else as protection from the wiles of worldly evil powers, now God calls us to use the sword of the spirit, the word of God, to both cut and to heal to proclaim both gospel and law, to stir up trouble in the face of injustice, and to remind people of God's grace. It's definitely a two-edged sword, for the Holy Spirit can both kill wrongdoing and lift up life for the oppressed. Okay, so now we're armed in our protective gear. How does God call us to use the sword of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God? A key to understanding is that it's the Word of God. First of all, it's God's word, not our own desires or our own agendas for God. Second, if we're to use God's word, then we must read the Bible and pray to discern what and where our challenges lie. To proclaim the power of God's word to us, we do this in prayer. Daily prayer, regular prayer, in silence and listening, or pleading, or praying through scripture as Judy is doing with her class using the Psalms, or using devotionals to guide our prayer. In prayer, we're transformed into God's warriors. Third, notice that we're talking about language as the ammunition of our power. By taking up and claiming for ourselves God's power, we as a community of faith gird ourselves to take initiative. We begin by naming the power that we fight against. 
protected by God's truth and our right relationship with God, who is our life giver, we stand shoulder to shoulder against injustice. You've just heard from Jenny about how we stand against the injustice of inadequate education for our El Salvadoran children with our scholarships. And when you cook or serve at Let's Help or Vida or Rescue Mission, you stand against the injustice of poverty and homelessness, hunger and lack of being able to speak English. When you contribute to the peacemaking offering on October 7th, you stand up against more global dimensions of injustice as our whole denomination gathers together with the power of all congregations working together to fight oppression. A powerful witness. Another opportunity to put on God's armor and tackle wrongs in Topeka is through Topeka Jump, the Topeka Justice and Ministry Project. You received a handout from the ushers, or if you didn't, be sure to get one as you leave the sanctuary. Coming together with more than 50 other Topeka congregations, an incredibly diverse group thus far, we at Trinity can stand shoulder to shoulder to learn more about and to research issues of inequality of resources or injustices in Topeka, such as crime, education, daycare, lack of, transport of public transportation, or a host of other issues. Here's how it will work. We'll gather together on September 15th for Rethink Justice workshops, in which we'll listen to biblical scripture calling us to attend to the root causes of injustice. Recognizing that we already put lots of time and energy into attending to the symptoms of injustice through our helping agencies. Then, later, all involved congregations will gather in house groups to consider our priorities for an issue to research and propose changes in the system which maintains and sustains some injustice or inequality. The power to effect change is this. Our reliance on God's word to guide us. Our research pointing us toward creative solutions and are coming together as a compellingly large and vocal community of witnesses. Our charge will be to hold community systems accountable to be who and what God intends for them to be. Pastor Kate and I have joined Topeka Jump. Session has learned about Topeka Jump. I am the vice co-chair of Topeka Jump. Kate and I invite you to a workshop on September 15th from 9 to 11.30 a.m. at Most Pure Heart of Mary Church, which is just several blocks to the east of us on 17th, to learn more. Pat and Leslie and Ken will have your tickets to this September 15th workshop out in the lobby after worship. <coughs> Through Topeka Jump, we'll put on the whole armor of God. We'll depend on the sword of the Spirit, God's word to guide and empower us. Together, 
will unmask the powers that hold so many hostage. Jesus has set the table to feed us the life-giving bread from heaven. And as we are fed, so we will go forth in God's armor to feed the hungry. As Isabel reminded me in a young people's message some years ago, cheers, let's drink to that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.